Um, so I am here with Kareem and Tom. Hello. If you have been following our social channels this week, you already know that Tom is our new community manager. So please give him a lovely welcome. And uh, yeah, he's going to be taking some of your questions that have to do with Kareem's demo uh, during the live stream. So make sure to ask away and we'll have a few minutes at the end of the stream uh, to get to those. Uh, in the meantime, you may have seen Kareem do a world sculpting uh, demo in Dreams before, but I promise you have not seen this one because it is different every time and it's really awesome. So welcome to Kareem's Dream Stream. Oh, you said it. I, I did. It. I did. No, and we really appreciated all of your Kareem's Dream Streams memes that you sent last <laughs> week. I had to do it. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, I'm not at all. Um, and uh, the cool thing is that I know a lot of you have been asking for streams about logic and animation. It's not this one, sorry. Um, but we will be doing that in the upcoming months. We've heard that. Um, we can't wait to show you more of that. And so uh, that is coming. Uh, and it will be really awesome and exciting. So I think... Um, and, oh, and digital, sorry, Kareem, I forgot, digital puppeteering. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that will be uh, awesome. And, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much everything. Um, we're going to go hop off and let Kareem work his magic. Cool. So, Kareem, thank take you. it away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, hello. Uh, today I'm going to uh, use the, the, the latest uh, edition of uh, Dream. Uh, and this is basically the closest... Uh, to to what uh, you're all going to get when you, when you get the project. In the past, when uh, we did those uh, uh, demos, uh, the the versions that we had were uh, uh, still uh, iterations, and uh, uh, for 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 the longest time, we we keep uh, uh, tuning and iterating and iterating and iterating. A lot of our systems now have come together, so. Today, even though I'm going to be focused more on making a 3D space, you will see me touch on some of the other features. So basically, without uh, 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 going on too much now, the, 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 the menu that uh, we have in Dream when I first uh, start my creation looks like that. And if I use the, the DualShock controller or the, 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 the moves, they are identical menus. In the uh, DualShock's case, the menu is docked on the screen and you use the gyro and the motion controls to move around and in the move, the, the, the menu is stuck on your uh, second controller. That uh, uh, is, is uh, but other than that, all the functionality, what they do, what, what happens when you press a button is identical. Uh, I will start this space by having one of those one of our characters, he's the main character uh, from our story, and I wanted to start this space by having a character in it because I wanted to show this time how can we create a 3D space for a character to explore rather than something that makes a good screenshot but uh, uh, might not be that uh, explorable. Uh, you might have seen in, in, in some of our other uh, streams the uh, concept of uh, collections. And the simplest way of starting an environment, all, always we say, is just to start by using a pre-made asset. Here, I just got a piece of grass and I can place it in the world around me. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to make a, a, a bunch of things from scratch. But actually, it's, it's really important to show that even just collaging from one piece here, copying and pasting it around my, my character, flipping it around, turning it uh, uh, upside down, and you can get a lot of, uh, of variety just from one, one piece. And we encourage people in Dream, when you first start, to just copy and paste and collage uh, to get your head around the camera, like for example, just things like how I'm pulling myself to the world, I'm pushing the world away, I turn around, I turn around the other way. Like these are uh, general principles that 
uh, carry across all the tools when you're using uh, uh, the electronics or when you're using deep sculpture or uh, so it's nice to get your head around them just by the copying and pasting uh, just from one or two objects like that like this is a rock and this is a piece of grass and I haven't made them I'm just using them but look how quickly I can change them into something that is mine so I just stamp this rock a few times make it small make it large you can see me like how I'm, I'm changing the scale of it just by using shortcuts on my controller rather than me going in a menu finding the scale tool and then scaling it that all uh, breaks the uh, uh, flow so we try as much as possible to have uh, shortcuts for anything then I multi-select multi this cluster of rocks that I've just put in I copy it a few times and then you find yourself like I have made a new object from this stone so even though I am presenting this as I am uh, 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 as I said like uh, uh, I'm just using collaging and copying and pasting in fact I have already made a new asset that uh, using those or remixing those existing ones and you can start mixing and matching them putting the green bit and the green grass on top of the the, the world and getting and you can just make like so a very very big piece like that that maybe we'll build our house uh, on uh, uh, and, and show some of the deeper tools. But I, I think it's very important to never forget that just the act of copying and pasting in Dream allows you to make the most original looking things even without having to delve into the deeper tools. Now, I've made this little uh, environment in order for me to just expand it a bit, I'll just grab this bit of grass again and just copy it a few times, expand it from the other side, flip it. Again, you see like how I flipped it just with one gesture of my hand. And I've got like the beginnings of a, an environment. At any point in uh, my, uh, my, my operation, I can just uh, quickly go into play mode that's a very good habit to do and then you can just walk around the space that you've made to make sure that it all works and uh, there is no holes in it or uh, there is no very high bits that our character cannot reach that sort of thing like here for example I find a hole so I can go back to my uh, edit mode and from that exact angle I can push my piece of grass and fix it. So going and jumping between the playing and creating is the first rule of making a successful environment for exploration and not only a pretty uh, space. Now I want to jump into deeper uh, sculpture. So how can I make one of those props so now we have uh, uh, our, our menu here shows you the, the, the basic functions of Dream. These tools here are like your general tools where you can move stuff around and you can scale it, you can uh, 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 clone them and we will go back to them if the time allows. And these here are our uh, uh, different uh, uh, modes. Uh, we call them, uh, 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 so we have a, a, a modeling one, a painting one, some special effects one, the sound one, and each one of those is very powerful and full of uh, uh, fun and uh, uh, interesting toys. One of the things I really like about Dream, and we've said it many times before, is that even though I said I'm just now going to go into uh, Deep Sculptor, I I can't help just copying a bunch more and fixing the composition. One of the major reasons is that it's immediate. If I want to see this a little bit higher, I, a little bit lower, I want it a little smaller, I want a copy of it, I want to spin it, put it here, 
want to make a tiny little pebble or a massive mountain in the back uh, it, it doesn't take long to try it out you try it out and you go no lower higher turn it uh, that is a very very important aspect of our, our, our philosophy in our tools the tools allow you to uh, spend more time using them because they are pleasant to use and uh, you don't have a lot of unnecessary steps I will try even throughout this uh, presentation or demo I hopefully will not spend a lot of time in front of abstract menus that you don't know exactly what you're looking at most of the time you will be looking at stuff that makes sense so I now jumped into the sculpture tool the philosophy of sculpture in dream is very simple it's all about shapes you've got a bunch of shapes that you can carve into the world what you would like so I've got a cube here but instead I'd like to use a cylinder and I want to make something in the same spirit of these rocks but a more complex one so I, I pick this cylinder I pick a color and I start stamping this shape in the world but that's quite a sort of clean looking cylinder while I want it to look like nice and painterly like that so just one twist of my controller and I make my cylinder a bit more uh, fuzzy uh, this fuzziness here that we we call it the looseness now you have a lot of different families of styles that you can use to change your looseness the one that comes out of the box is a simple square one but I'm going to choose a, a nice sort of like painterly looking one like that and now I will make I'll continue using my cylinders but now rather than them being uh, uh, sort of like fully clean they will be a bit fuzzy and not only that instead of them just appearing in the world as a cylinder I want to blend them uh, uh, with the shapes beside them so they can uh, create more interesting formations so now you can see each form is going into the next one and creating these nice intersections between the parts so very quickly you can start getting nice interesting rock-like formations and you can see this is the act of sculpting in dream adding and cutting shapes whether my shapes are super clean or uh, like this here is like an incredibly clean shape and if I'm making a vehicle for example that would be the right kind of finish for a vehicle and I can get more shiny materials and fabrics to use so I want here to just like make a big chunky uh, bit of mountain so I can build my my house my sort of architectural space on and the reason I, I went for uh, a bit of landscape and then followed by a bit of architecture is that that allows me to go between organic sculpture so for anyone interested in making more uh, uh, creatures or animals or people or stuff like that the organic sculpture is for you and then the architectural sculpture delves into the more precise end of dream and how uh, much we've uh, added some features to support that now you can see like my rock formation is quite plain colored so color in dream is very exciting like rather than me I can color this thing in in a bunch of ways I will show you some of them the first simple way is that I can actually change the color of my uh, cylinder as I am sculpting so I go to my swatches and pick a color and choose the color so in this case I will pick uh, 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 here we go I will go here and pick for example this dark blue and you will change you'll see the color changing to blue and it blends with the other colors if I change it to yellow you'll see the yellow here we go and you see it becoming yellow but of course that's too slow that 
process of going every minute or every whatever to the menu to change a color isn't right. So we have another feature which we call the mixed brush and that allows me basically to uh, drag a bunch of colors inside my mixer I'm sort of dragging some dark blue a bit of uh, grayish green a bit of uh, sort of pastel brown you know a mix of colors that say uh, rock uh, formation to me and I, 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 I spin that around and you can see and spin it slowly and you can see the swatch is changing the color live and now my 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 shape is changing live in front of me uh, uh, and as I place each and every edit the different color comes across and comes through that allows me to basically get a, a nicer uh, uh, experience of, of coloring or shaping my form while I'm uh, working without uh, uh, distraction and disturbance uh, allowing me to be more thinking about that shape and that mountain and not, uh, not uh, obsessed about a menu. I think one of the saddest things about uh, digital uh, environments and tools is that most of the time the users are trying to tame the beast, trying to sort of like make it do what they want, while instead they should be thinking about that character or that rock or that mountain or that vehicle as much as possible. You know, I, uh, the, the, the waste of time when you're spending it just adjusting uh, parameters and things like that. So I made myself an interesting formation. You can see how these same techniques can be used to do uh, more uh, 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 elaborate things if I uh, were to uh, use these same adds and carve methodology to do uh, 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 a head or a character. You can see how that can happen. Another way of coloring my objects rather than as I am modeling, I can paint it after the fact. That concept is actually more familiar with 3D people. You just pick your airbrush color, again use, pick one of the shapes you want to use as your brush, and you can paint over the shape. So now I'll save this color mixer to my swatches because I might want to use it later, and that goes up here in my colors now and forever I've got it so if I want to use it again I can use it again and build up my library of colors here I'm just going to pick a bunch of greens and use that to paint over my 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 object so rather than uh, sculpting now I'm just coloring it and I will make it uh, uh, a bit less opaque so it's like quite uh, pleasant and see through a bit watercolory and now I'm just going to go over the, the the formation and paint it some people prefer that some people prefer to sort of model monochromatically and then color after that like a lot of people who like using uh, or doing Warhammer for example and that sort of methodology you even can go in after the fact and make, you know how I showed you uh, how we can variate the, 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 what we call the looseness of the model. I can go in here and loosen the model up. So now I can just make it more painterly in some parts as well. So if I want to make these bits a bit painterly, uh, so it doesn't have to all happen in the process of modeling, you know, if you want to model it all, uh, uh, rigid, strong, clean shapes and then you go in after the fact and you uh, uh, loosen it up and color it, go ahead. So this here is my bit of land that I made and now we want to sort of duplicate it a few times to get a more interesting kind of shape and I want now to build an architectural 
uh, 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 house uh, on that uh, piece of land. In fact, before that, I want to show another tool as well, which is the uh, uh, styling tool. Uh, the the, the, to make a, a sea because you can't have like a cool architectural sort of space without some water. I'm having here beside me like the books of my two of my big heroes, but this one mainly is the man uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, of course, greatest architect. And uh, I uh, I think there hasn't been. There has been more advances in architecture since Frank Lloyd Wright, but never a, a, a sort of command on the medium. The transition from classic uh, to modern that he has showed us is something else. So I'm, I'm getting a cube here, literally just a cube, and I want to make a C out of just this cube. And I use the same color mixer uh, to uh, uh, give me some variety. So just make a bunch of cubes beside each other and we turn that thing into a C. By just placing it here, I can extend it. We have uh, f uh, functionalities, by the way, in sculpture that allow you to modify your forms after the fact as well. Uh, kind of like extruding or anyone who has used uh, software like uh, SketchUp would have uh, seen stuff like that. So th I've made a, a stripped bit of land. Now that doesn't really look like the sea, so I need to loosen it up. I, I go to another tool which is called the style tool, which allows me to loosen it after the fact. I change the style from the squarey one to let's say this Monet one and sort of paint over that different style, cool. And now that it is put together, I want to uh, uh, give it some animation. So I go to another bunch of tools, which we call inside the tool bag here, and we call it the effects tool. And literally I go to this tap one called the flow tool, and if I hold my tool over the water it just makes it transform into a C. If it's too fast I can slow it down by just doing the reverse. Too slow, too fast. So see again here's an example of like our UI philosophy. Just changing the speed of the thing is a pleasant operation. In fact if I want to change the direction of it I don't go to some weird concept of uh, 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 I just go to another tool called the comb and I comb it in another direction and then it goes in the other direction. I want it to go this way, I want it to go that way. So again, as tactile as we could possibly think of, in order to allow the users to enjoy themselves, if, if you have a river that goes and goes around and goes up and down like a waterfall or something, you can uh, have that. Uh, experience n uh, not uh, over uh, uh, technical. So I put this C, I want to slow it down because it's a bit too much. So let's go back here. I go back to the uh, slow it down. Yeah, cool. The other uh, thing uh, that I can do to this C to give it a more C like look is. Uh, go back to the effects tool and give it a waviness. So again, I just use the wave tool and that makes the water go a little bit in a wave-like manner. Cool. So now we've got the sea, we've got the bit of land, we've got our guy, let's build a architectural formation. Uh, so I go back to my sculpture tools Again, the same bunch of shapes, but now I'm going to turn the grid on and change the materials maybe to something more industrial, this shiny material. And I will make a bunch of modules that I will use to make my building. The, 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 you can see my grid or my shape now is locking to the grid. So if I build this... Uh, uh, 
shape here if I make my stamp my uh, my cubes they go uh, cleanly on the grid I can start extruding I can do things like that where I rather than stamping shapes I crushed my shape and I extrude out some walls these are some of the tools that we have uh, uh, done for the uh, architectural or for the more precise user sort of thing uh, we make this thing grow more and more bits the nice thing is that I can still cut and add and do a lot of the same operations that we were doing for the rock I can also make a hole in my shape and get a more interesting uh, uh, cube it's like a cube now with a hole and if I use that I can make a module out of that what about if I put it on the side here for example as a detail on that module put it on the other side again I can carve a hole into this shape using another one of our shapes let's take a cylinder for example and make a carved hole inside there wanted exactly where I want and the nice thing I want to show you you, you can really zoom in and get quite exact about where you want your uh, uh, choices to go so I made this module here for symmetry I'll go and do the hole on the other side as well sort of thing so I've got this bit now what can I do with that? How can we turn that into something else? So I can now just see what's the potential of this uh, thing. I can first use it to get my guy up there. So I've made a small uh, reuse, exactly the same philosophy of my rocks. I start using this shape and see what we can do with that. So I'm first going to use it as a path. come in make it quite smaller height and then make a cool entrance by turning it around using that to block the nice thing about architecture is repetition so whenever you repeat something it starts becoming more intentional I think myself and Anton once made a uh, one of the streams uh, uh, before showing the power of the modules and how you can just make one piece and use that as an item uh, that you can then expand on and turn into a whole city uh, so I'm sort of building my formations here and getting to discover their potential you can sort of take something in fact I'll do that and then flip this one make an interesting entrance and turn them around like that I'm starting to see something shaping up the next thing I want to try is a another module so it can have some variety so I'll go in here and make something I saw in one of my books uh, a cool uh, uh, stone-like uh, technique that I will show you here. So I'll go back to my colors, save that, and make a, a rock uh, or a brick uh, color scheme. A rock, rock uh, color scheme. Just here and there, and then make a long, a long thin long thin thing and start putting my rock on it and because the, the the tumbler or the color mixer is picking different parts the each time I will get a different 
sort of shade that's quite subtle but it gives enough uh, variety as well I'll change I'll give it even more one accent is stronger color so we can get some difference and I'm sort of doing it in a sketch like way I don't want to make it too clean to variate the looseness so you know you can do your own textures and your own very varied uh, materials by painting them up like that and then just I'm gonna clean the facade so it's like all one plane and we can mix that make it shorter and now I've got like this uh, sort of brick-like structure that we can mix in with the other one. To make that more intentional sort of you start working it with the other piece and as soon as you have two ver two different materials you start getting uh, uh, the 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 rhythm of the uh, design starting to sort of appear you can work with that and see the 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 what what design is going to appear i think sometimes in architecture it's very essential to have varied uh, 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 surfaces to play with um, in fact i can even mix in a lighting module so we can have uh, another uh, strong uh, ingredient in architectural construction but you can see already how one a few very simple shapes have turned into uh, a more uh, ambitious or a more uh, intentional looking uh, thing we we can start keep going with that sort of uh, design i want to uh, show you as well the bit that i was uh, talking about with integrating a, a light so again like all our uh, we have multiple lights in dream or multiple ways of doing lights in dream the sim uh, the simplest one is you sculpt any object at all even the simplest of objects like a cube here I'll, I'll just do I don't want it in brown so we'll do it in sort of an orangey color like that and then I could just literally do a simple shape like that to make it more interesting carve something make a, a hole in it sort of like that it's the simplest of shapes and then I will go in my uh, coating tool and I can just make that glow and now this has turned into a light this light I can integrate in my design as well so now my design is starting to get quite complex because it's it's got lights in it it's got multiple materials and surfaces uh, uh, and uh, we're ready to uh, play with it I want to sort of put this light behind this shape because it kind of looks like a window. Uh, and if I if we repeat it enough times, it will uh, work more. In fact, let's integrate this rock thing with that piece as well. We can make it like detail up here. And you can, you can flip it. The, the, the nice, uh, variate the module size a bit so you can get 
some variety and then again rationalize it with something like that by the way one of the things we're intending on doing is doing much slower videos we're calling the master classes or the, the uh, tutorial classes and those will be much slower paced going in the tools showing what does what today I didn't do that or I, I didn't choose to go in that pace uh, instead I wanted actually to make the, the, the twitch about design or designing spaces rather than how to or what tool does what because uh, th there will be uh, other other videos and other streams that are more uh, uh, tuned to that uh, uh, direction. Look, now for example, I found the circle bit again, and let's duplicate it and do a, a module. The duplication tool, by the way, is like crazy because you can make uh, uh, stuff out of, uh, uh, you can make like very organic and weird things like uh, tentacles and stuff like that just by for example if I use this piece of grass and I clone it multiple times and then uh, 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 recursively change the scale of it you can like really get like some inception type coolness but uh, the more formal usage of uh, cloning is like what I'm doing here actually I'll switch the grid back on tilt on 45 and we're the entrance of our fortress or our uh, uh, architectural space is shaping up. Take another one, take these two, flip it, put it on the other side. And now, okay, we'll take all that piece and make it into a new piece. So see, the same way that I was doing to the rocks in the beginning, by taking a rock and composing out of it and then this plus presents itself. As soon as I multiple selected stuff on my menu, I have a plus saying, do you want to group it? Yes, I want to group it. And now that's a group. So I can also go to that group and another feature presented itself like, do you want to save this as a new cre uh, creation? If I go like, yeah, I want to name it, publish it, and everybody in the community will just get that bit. So as you're working, you can always pick bits su that were successful from your creation and uh, uh, publish them. You don't have to uh, do the whole thing. Uh, but I'm now sort of, I copied and pasted this sort of like crazy thing. And now it's starting to uh, turn into, the, you know, like some crazy alien actually want to see it on this side yeah that's better it looked a bit much it needs as well a scale a scale upgrade yeah it's better more convincing yeah like this central hot bit is now turning into something you know you always look in a design for an area to galvanize around you want to sort of as soon as you find success okay I feel uh, this is an entrance of some sort and now we can uh, uh, respond to that see if that's a good one So this, this building is shaping up now into an architectural superstructure. Uh, that now is uh, my building. And if I want to go back to uh, get the land to uh, come back and sort of respond to the sea, now we need to move it. Cool. So I, now, now that we have a bit of environment, I sort of, uh, that appeared, put
put the bit, sort of move, copy a bit of the landscape again to sort of set this uh, building on top of the land. In fact, now I want to build something that s s makes it sit a bit better. So I'll just take this first base thing, just expand the base a bit more. Because it's sort of a bit odd that the building just goes directly on the rock, needs a bit of breathing. So as you can see, like the act of designing in Dream uh, is uh, quite aid, uh, accentuated or uh, uh, a lot, what, what am I trying to say? I want to say it sort of makes you think while you're working way more than other tools. I claim because the, the, the tool is so immediate that it, it makes my actual problems more about what's that building going to be where is that place you know what's happening there who lives there uh, the, 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 it doesn't feel right you know like when a writer is writing a song something they they, they, they uh, put a, s a sentence and it doesn't feel right and scribble and throw the the, the, the notes and, and start again because it's not right it doesn't feel right like uh, design and art and storytelling and animation and all these things they cannot be uh, 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 at the mercy at the mercy of technology and what can be done and deadlines and that madness it, it it's only timeless and it only survives time when it is not only a, a testament to the technology. Yeah, Dream is all a, all full of technology, but and it's the, our guys have done like astonishing work in terms of like lighting and rendering and but the user interface that puts all these technologies in people's hands and allows every single little cut. Like if I go back to this little floor here and I just want to do a tiny little indentation here like that or I want a little crack, that's all like exactly my marks and that is mine. This is not the technology, this is my choice. The technology is obviously beautiful and it's allowing me to do that but I think that is what makes people's styles really come through. If someone else is doing this demo the building and the, the choices and everything will really uh, conform to their own uh, aesthetic abilities and choices and, and, and uh, rather than one size fits all uh, mentality. It's not, uh, that's cool. See, I found uh, we're almost uh, done now, which is a good point because I think covered most of the things. I wanted to do a cool tree, but next time maybe the, shall we do a cool do tree? a cool tree yeah it's got to, trees are like uh, almost as cool as humans because they the the they're cooler than humans they make the oxygen. everybody on the stream wants cool tree too okay, so we let's got do it. it let's do it let's do it it's uh it's also you know a bit something for nature i i just expand I like uh, Dream makes you want to uh, uh, always resolve your spaces nicely and not just leave it in an annoying place. Like it just, you just, I'll uh, just put this one extra bit. It's always a good sign. Like it's always a good sign that you don't want to go home and you just want to keep uh, using it. Uh, the tree. So, where was I? Yeah. Uh, a nice way of doing tree actually is using the upright tool. We have a tool called upright here. And just for the first bunch of edits, I like to use the upright tool. So I'm just gonna sort of, not brown, a bit lighter. There you go. It's a bunch of different browns here. This mixed brush feature is amazing, I love it. Uh, and then I do a sort of long and thin uh, cylinder, make it tighter. 
yeah so literally a cylinder right and I've got the upright so it's definitely facing upwards and then I'll just make one cylinder exact and then I go to a stretch tool that we have and make it a bit longer there we go up you go and now that I've done that I, I, I make it a bit that's a technique anyway a lot of people have their there are three secrets, but I, I, I like doing mine like that. So basically, I now will carve some, uh, using the soft blend, I will make it imperfect so it's not like a uh, lamp post, but it has that general upness, which is essential, I think. Like that, that's very upsetting when you do a tree that just doesn't feel like it's going up so I made the cylinder and then I just cut out some bits and now it, it, it sort of uh, 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 acts as a, a simple base and now I want to do an, uh, an awesome branch uh, so a technique to do a branch which I, I like is uh, I'll turn off the upright now we don't need it anymore thank you and we do I do a sort of egg shape thing and we have uh, another tool which allows me to spin my forms like that that creates very cool looking uh, 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 results if I move my hand while the thing is spinning it does these kind of interesting shell like shapes if I move it very slowly it does a cool branch and I think that uh, uh, you know like in nature you see like branches like always doing like really nice looking things like that so that's a nice technique and then because we don't have much time I will have to sort of just copy it and paste it a bunch of times and we get see what we can get out of that sort of thing in fact I will do another one as well just to get some variety And we can always go after the fact as well and move stuff around. So, you know, anyone who wants to be super meticulous can be. So I just did like a bunch of branches like that, clustered them together, make that into a new object. And now we can just uh, uh, branch it out. To make it varied as well, I can go in and just uh, delete, delete, oh no, go in, delete one from here, and then go and delete on a different one from there, you know, not this one, right, not the full thing. Because each one of those groups, you know, you want them to be a slightly different from one another, something. So you can do that. Uh, and you know, we got by ourselves a, 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 a base of a tree, and now to show off the, but it's mega huge, so we need to rescale it. I'll just select all its bits, right? Make that into one thing, and then I want to turn my upright again, smaller. Where's the dude? Yeah, here he is. So, always a good sort of like mental thing just to compare to the guy so we don't go crazy right and then let's put some awesome painterliness so uh, we go back to our painterly tool I pick the stamp brush the stamp brush allows you to just stamp in space uh, 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 the different styles but rather than just stamping them I will make a cloud out of it so uh, we have a sort of scatter operation that if I twist my hand it just makes a scatter bomb of that sort of tree uh, not tree uh, that uh, brush type so I'll just pick I think like some warm orangey sort of ness and a little olive there we 
go and that's nice and sort of so you see like it takes from that color and now I can just put this cloud cluster of tree goodness around the branches the, this uh, feature of painting uh, with the splats in space is just like loaded like there is like a whole universe of uh, uh, techniques and brushes and stuff that you can do out of it but we'll just show today the cloud brush or the stamp br uh, uh, one which is uh, uh, tip of the iceberg but it's it's very cute so again we did our tree here if we like the tree and it looks cool then i can again stamp that into uh, uh, publish that on its own and say okay i've got a cool tree out of this uh, uh, demo uh, uh, i'll make it a bit smaller and I've, I've got the upright one so now a bunch of them oh upside down no. that's kind of good for another time we do a surreal thing but i don't want that now we uh, yeah. just always really nice to uh, have them in an environment and and a great note actually to uh, put some here I will do separate videos on the cameras and how to move around space and just like stuff like that a bit short. Uh, on its own, like uh, it, it needs its it, it needs its time just to talk about all the nuances. You've seen me like zoom in and out and stuff like that, and there is some secret sauce there. So we will talk about it in 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 in, in depth. But today is just a, like, an overview. The lovely thing about uh, uh, this uh, now, just to get some of the tree on the other side. Bosh. Here we go. The nice thing is now uh, to uh, uh, introduce some variety to these trees. We can go to my code tool and pick my tint brush and sort of go and take a dark uh, color and just go, I think these ones need to be a little bit darker, you know, and this one here and that one there. So you can always uh, achieve variety after the fact in, in, in a multitude of ways. I can restyle, I go to this tree and go, I want to actually restyle it. So I will go to my style tool. I don't like this splatty brush. I want to do it out of this dotty one. So I will just change it into the dotty one. Then this one too. No, I don't like that. Scribbly, yeah, I like that. So, you know, you, you uh, all the tools in Dream have that immediacy and that uh, maestroness allows you to just always have the courage to try things out. Cool. All right. Thanks, Graham. Thank you. Um, that was super cool. Uh, I the oh, <laughs> oh, I fall down. Then we almost You're killed Graham. Okay. Uh, so uh, the question, uh, one of the questions that we always get is about. Um, uh, sort of thermometer, how many objects you can put in a level, that kind of stuff. So if you could elaborate a little bit, um, yeah. I know it's something that always comes up when we do these. See, we have a, 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 a great uh, bunch of us working on the thermometer features. That allows you in every level to see, you see these things on the side, those uh, sliders, that's telling you like that mo is the, your uh, model quota. Uh, and if you fill it up, it tells you uh, advice, try reducing your models or if you're really expensive in using the logic it will tell you actually you've went overboard in logic try to chill it out so there is a lot of diagnostic to oh check this out this is like the <laughs> this is like the matrix we love this feature by the way this one allows you to uh, explode your scene into a list view that allows you to see it and uh, work on it in a more uh, 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 object by object way and it's very useful for electronics but on thermometer we have diagnostic tools tell you where your problem is give you some advice and uh, different uh, 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 areas where you can uh, 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 optimize 
It's very hard to have a silver bullet there because someone might put all their effort in this, uh, a piece of music and use all the stamina of the device to make a whole sort of like a, a Fantasia type uh, uh, experience, musical, visual thing. Someone else will put all their energy into the handling of an amazing combat uh, 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 character and so on. So the, the, we try as much as possible to give the information that allows every user to uh, 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 optimize their uh, spaces. Yeah. Uh, I know the answer to the next question, uh, but it's cool to show. Uh, can you make it night? Yeah. <laughs> This is cool. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Shamey, shamey, shamey. Uh, so, so, yeah, this is a very nice one, actually, because uh, we have uh, uh, Alex and uh, uh, Simon, the great Simon and great Mark Adami, we have, like, such an amazing uh, uh, engine department. This uh, project would not have been possible. So the, the, the reason I picked them up now is this environment gadget here and the great gadget, these two babies here. This one first, uh, little thing, uh, allows you to do all sorts of things to the environment. First you get this cool gizmo, which is like got a glowing bit on top of it. And that's basically the sun. So you can move the sun around, get it in front of the shape, put it behind for like more drama. And instead of trying to search where is the sun in the scene, you can just uh, 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 move this little gizmo around. You also can make it dark by uh, uh, making the sun brightness very low, so we sort of like make no sun at all. Or we can keep the sun brightness and do like movie style uh, darkness. So the, a lot of movies actually their night is very bright. It's just uh, fake, so you can still see everything but it has the ambience of the night. So you have in, either you sort of switch off the sun entirely or you just darken. And if, if I darken the scene like that and I want to uh, 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 bring in some artificial lights, we have, uh, uh, but before I do that, actually, just to show more of the environment. Uh, so that, that shows you how to do the night time, but we can actually also change the styles of. The, the sky, see the sky here has the same painterly effects that we have everywhere. I can change it to a different uh, uh, color, completely get like, you know, purple, just one for prints. <laughs> and uh, we get like a bit of a purple sky. It's too saturated, so we sort of reduce the saturation. So a lot of toys to play with your environment and mood uh, to, 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 to change the, the atmosphere. So that's one of them. And the other one uh, to, to expand on like how to make a space dark, you can use movie type effects, which is this other toy. And there's so many other features in them, but that's just an overview. And here it's like your good old sort of brightness and contrast and, and, and stuff that People are now so used to them and their phones and stuff. But we can do this one here to get like your proper Instagram style. So, for example, I can go in the shadows and give them greens in the shadows to give it a bit of uh, uh, sort of David Lynchness. And then we go and in the mid-tones and, and fill them with blues. And then in the, in the highlights, Sort of make them very uh, warm. Mm, I like that. So it just like uh, uh, changes the grade of the the environment. You can have add vignettes and make it like vignette from the side and bloom and all sorts of things. So those two uh, uh, toys here allow you to uh, uh, change completely the mood of your space uh, that you did after the fact. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, because we had a bunch of questions like asking like how you add like something like rain, yeah. which is maybe a good yeah. one to show too. Yeah. While yeah. we're and then I think we're probably out of time, so we can let everybody go home for the weekend. <laughs> um, but you also just to remind everybody you can send us your questions. We won't be able to get to everything right now. Uh, we still have lots of time to talk about dreams, uh, and we're going to be doing streams uh, in the uh, pretty much every month. 
uh, now, and we're going to be doing logic and animation uh, coming up, which is really exciting to a lot of people. We got a ton of questions about it. Um, so a lot of the questions that we can't answer currently, we will be getting to in the upcoming months, and uh, we've been logging all of them, so we know what you've been asking, uh, and we'll show you how to make rain now. Cool. So do I love doing this. It's so fun. Yeah. So you do sort of like uh, we basically. I'm gonna make it. I'll keep it moody actually. So I just do a, a, a pass, I draw a little pass like that. It's more like snow, straight is directly. And then, so I just did one straight line, and then I basically just animate that. So, you go to the animation features, and you duplicate it. So now I've duplicated this line, uh, and I can increase the copies, make even more of them. So now this line, I've got more of them. But how can we animate that? So we turn that into what we call a... I need to turn the time on. And then we can start making that scroll. So now this uh, whole line is scrolling, but I want to make it uh, uh, have a shorter tail. So we have one which is like the tail, make it faster as well. So here I'm sort of modifying the speed of it, make it come down faster and faster and faster. And then pulse, yeah. So the pulse basically makes that uh, uh, thing not uh, draw completely, just draws a little bit of it and goes along the line. So I'm basically using a combination of these guys it's too slow this rain so it needs to go faster and faster so cool faster and then you can go back to the page of the copies and sort of go like actually you need more copies so give it it's still super chill so you speed it up and that's the experience of it's got like the rain streaking across the window vibe yeah. Um, yeah, and that can be used for all sorts of weather effects. It's one of my favorite things to play around with in dreams. Um, so yeah, uh, hit us up on Twitter, hashtag tree secrets. Yeah. We're gonna sure. You know we're going to have that's to do a, that to stream now. now. <laughs> uh, and we'll get to all the questions that we can answer. And I hope that everybody has an amazing weekend. Um, say hi to Tom on Twitter. Thank Welcome him to the community. Thank you so lovely as well. You've all been very, very lovely. Both the people here and the community. It's been a great person. Thank you. And Cream, thank you so much. <laughs> I could watch you do that forever, always. It is incredible. Thank you. So. Thank you. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye, thank bye. you. Bye.